I want to go into a specific conversation that I seen on rich and unemployed. Rich and unemployed. So I see him dropping a lot of content. I think that it's dope. I think it's a good conversation to have. But considering what was happening with student loans and everything that was happening with the Supreme Court and Biden promising y'all student loan forgiveness and whether or not you should go to college, the cost of college, I want to break it down from a C student's perspective, my perspective, from a video that somebody sent me. And I watched the first like the first minute and a half and I said, OK, this would be this would be something good to share with the people. So make sure you all get the likes up for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, thank you to our sponsor, Teach Hanley, 30 percent off your first order plus a free gift. Uh, that link is in the description. If you are not a part of the Patreon, link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. I want to share this video with y'all and I want to break this down in real time uh, so that you guys can actually get a better perspective of when you should or shouldn't go to college and whether or not it's worth it as an investor. The only thing that I would change is that I probably, to be honest with you, although I established some great relations, I wouldn't have went to college at all. Mm. Because if I had to pick college or mentorship, I'd pick mentorship. Man, <laughs> he said if he had to pick college or mentorship, he would pick mentorship. Now, somebody in the email that they sent me about this video told me that he runs a credit repair service. Somebody in an email said that he runs a credit repair service. Okay. So I don't know exactly what he does. I wasn't able to do any research. I'm not interested in doing any research. I just want to break down what he's saying. He said he would have chose mentorship over college. Let me say that one more time. Mentorship over college. Now, I think that there's additional context into that. But let me continue to play the video, and then I'm going to break that down for you guys. People won't understand now. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like college... You got to think, but when you go to college, and, and let me, and before I go into that, let me just kind of touch on not making it to the league, how that make, it didn't make, I didn't feel bad, bro, because I realized early in my college days, I realized that that probably wasn't going to happen because I realized a small percentage of people that actually do make it. Yeah. And I had some, I had some college teammates that a couple of them had trials, but hell, they didn't even make it. And I'm like, I, I'm cool with understanding knowing when, it, when, when a nigga better than me on the court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, my boy, he was a star in PG, and he ain't make it. I'm uh -huh. like. Okay, so here's the problem with this, right? If he was in college, and I'm assuming that he was there on a scholarship, I'm trying to understand why he would choose mentorship over college, considering that he would be there on a full ride. Elect I don't know him. I don't know anything about him, but he's saying that he was a hooper. He's saying that, you know, he felt like he was good enough or maybe not was going to make it into the league. But I'm assuming because he was in college, uh, he was there on a scholarship. I'm trying to understand why you wouldn't take advantage of that, because college is not an opportunity for you to try to embrace test taking or anything like that. It's a way for you to learn and then use the information that you learn from that as far as getting a degree in order to get yourself in the door it doesn't actually mean that you're good at what you do. So what you learn in college is how to get the fundamentals of whatever it is that you're going into. And then the, the success that comes afterwards is your ability to continue to grow, right? This is the context. My question is, if you have the ability to be able to get the degree, why didn't you take advantage of it? And then utilize the fact that you were going to school for free in order to get your, your foot in the door to network with the right people. But let's continue. <laughs> Shit, they ain't going, they ain't going, they ain't going rock with your boy. Yeah, yeah. And then and then the other another part about it is that when I graduated, my daughter. And let me say this also. Y'all gotta stop wanting to be basketball players. And it's nothing wrong with being a basketball player. Um, with having a hobby or whatever, getting into rapping or entertainer and all of that other type of stuff. But y'all gonna have to stop banking on that, right? That's a hustle that can be if you take it serious enough and if you're good enough and if you're able to market yourself effectively enough can turn into a very, very lucrative career. But that is the, not the thing that you're supposed to be banking on in order to be successful. Stop banking and stop selling your kids on the fact that they're going to make it into the league. They very well make it into the league. They might make it into the league. But stop banking on that because 
even if you did make it into the league, that don't mean that you have the financial wherewithal or the financial literacy to be able to translate that into something that's super successful even after you get the money. Because a lot of people make it so that they can try to live for the rest of their life and not be able to maintain the lifestyle that they really want to live. Right. You can make way more money being Dan Gilbert than you can being a LeBron James. You have a better chance of being Dan Gilbert than you have of being LeBron James. But let me go ahead and play the rest of this. It was born. So I graduated in May. My daughter was born in July. I said, I'll be damned even if I go overseas. Now, I could have went overseas. Definitely had that in the bag. Yeah. But I'm like, I'll be damned if I go overseas. I'm going I'm to stay here. I'm going to sacrifice my goals and dreams to get my daughter her goals and dreams. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not leaving my baby. You. Look, my dad was never there. I don't know him. I ain't not, I'm not doing that to my child. Mm. No, no, sir. So I, I quit and gave up all of that. But when I look at college, bro, if I could do it all over again, I would have, I would have chose mentorship over college because people have to realize, like, when you go to college, bro, people don't understand that college is a cycle and they feel like they went to college and they may have one degree, two degrees, masters. They got more degrees than the thermometer. Mm. But the reality is that they're not making money. And the reason why. And that's a fact. And he's absolutely right about that. But the context is key, right? Again, you don't go into college in order to be like the professor. You don't go into college in order to be like the administrator. You don't go into college in order to get coaching from these guys. You're supposed to be able to do both. You get mentorship, which then guides you through the ability to be able to go through college, which allows for you to get your foot in the door to network with the right people and build the right relationships, which then allows for you to then leverage that information and that money that you're making in order to make way more money going forward. And you have something to fall back on if the business does not fail forward the way that you want to. You can continue to do that and make and make more moves while still investing in yourself. You're supposed to do both. Right. I would I would implore for any person that's going into college. First of all, don't go into college going going to get an African studies degree. Don't go into it for liberal arts. If you're going to go into college, go into it looking to get into a STEM field. Right. It's a lot of money to be able to get into STEM programs in college. But he is right about one thing. Most of the people that's teaching you in college, they don't know any, they don't have any clue of how it is in order to really build a business. That's why I'm not really, I'm not stunting Boyce Watkins. Show an account. Listen, show me one account that got 150,000 in it, cash at least. Or show me a show me a stock play that you got at least a hundred thousand invested in that particular stock, and then I'll start to be like, okay, yeah, well, I don't give a fuck about his four hundred one k. I don't care about none of that. Show show me one month where he's generated or spent at least a hundred thousand in one month, two weeks. We ain't even gonna do two weeks. Give me one month where you made over a hundred thousand in one in one month. Cause all of that degree shit. That don't mean that you know how to get money. That don't mean that you understand finances. That don't mean that you understand how to be able to start a business and then scale it up effectively and then what it is that you're able to, you know, if you can hire people and how many people you put in the work. That don't mean shit to me. So he is right about that. But again, context matters. College could be a good thing for you if you know how to leverage it correctly because everybody, first of all, is not a hustler. And secondly, stop going into fields and degrees that's not actually going to generate you any revenue. Why you're not making money is because college did exactly what it was supposed to do for you, even though you think that it failed you. No, it didn't fail. It didn't fail you. It is a system that is designed to have you learning from people that can only teach you so much because they only know so much. Mm -hmm. You learn from a professor that's making 30, 40, 50,000, maybe 60, maybe $70,000 a year, maybe. He can't teach you about business, entrepreneurship. He can't teach you how to make the, his salary that he makes $70,000 a year. He can't teach you how to make that a month, mm -hmm. a week. In a day, you need a mentor. You need somebody that actually has put together a system, is running a business successfully to show you how to make that kind of money. Mm -hmm. So I agree with them. You have to. I think that everybody, everybody needs to get some form of mentorship from somebody that can give them information on how they can guide themselves to the parts that they really want to be at. And when you seek your mentor out, make sure that they understand you. Don't let them give you a one size fits all solution of what it is that they think is supposed to your life is supposed to be like. Don't let them give you a one, one size fits all solution. I think that everybody that is going to wind up being overly successful. Now, I know a lot of y'all don't necessarily care about being successful. Some of y'all are not tripping about the idea of leveling up and being successful. 
Everybody needs a mentorship. It don't have to be me, right? It don't have to be him. I don't know who this guy is or whatever, but you need to get aligned with people that are in the in the spaces that you need to be in that, that has accomplished some of the things that you want to accomplish. And even if you have to pay for it, you need to pay for mentorship. It is invaluable. You will pay to learn in college courses and then rack up $150,000 in student loan debt for something that's going to pay you $30,000 a year in social social studies when you get out of college and you're going to be working at McDonald's, but you won't invest in a mentorship for somebody that can give you some real game on how you can level up in real life. Guess what you did? You got all of those degrees. You spent all of those hundreds of thousands of dollars to that college. You graduated with a shit ton of debt and you are working to pay the debt off, to pay your bills until you figure something out. That's crazy. When you when you could have just got a mentor <laughs> until you figure something out. I thought yeah. college was the way out. <laughs> no, college college is the way into debt. Mm -hmm. It's the way into the lifestyle. If you don't know what you're doing, that the government wants you. That's it's a trick bag, bro. Yeah, like I I did it, and I and thank God I had a scholarship. But it was like I graduated, and I was just like, so he did have a scholarship. I don't really understand what the problem is. Mm -hmm. What the hell I'm gonna do? Mm -hmm. What I'm gonna do? Luckily for me, you supposed. To <laughs> Now, let me, let, me, let me flip this on y'all. And let me tell you, he's half right and he's half wrong, okay? And that's, again, that's why context matters. When you look at the people that are on the top of the, top of the food chain, as far as the average household income and what they push their kids into, Patrick Bet David did a, a video on this, and I broke it down. When you look at what these people are pushing themselves into, right, they are pushing themselves into STEM fields and then they're being strategic on how it is that they manage their lifestyle so that they can then invest in the things that's going to pay them for the rest of their life, right? The, the Indians, Asians, the people that have the top household income inside, of, they not coming out of college saying, well, what am I going to do? They actually have a plan. If you want to be a surgeon, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be somebody of significance that then can generate a lot of revenue for the rest of your life you can't do that by being a hustler there are certain paths for everybody and everybody is not meant to start their own business let me say that again every single person is not meant to start their own business you don't even have the work ethic you don't have the drive i'm here on the fourth of july in my office i could be live streaming this from my crib right now but i'm in my office because i got business to take care of down here and everybody is not built for what it is that i do Everybody not built to be a surgeon. Everybody not meant to be a physician. Everybody is not meant to be a dentist. You have to figure out who you are before you get there and start spending money investing on yourself so that you can then go down that path and then learn how money works. Anybody can learn how money works. Very few people actually understand where it is that they're supposed to be or where their talent lies. That's why you also need a mentor to go along with you, go along with whatever it is that you're doing, right? So it's not, co it's not that college is bad. Is what y'all choose to get into in college, how much debt you take out, and then what it is that you leverage. If you're leveraging the information for your benefit going forward and long term, that's the that's the play. All right. B, I started at Sprint. And y'all can go to community college, but neither here nor there. And I went ape shits on them, and I I was able to get commissions. You know right. what I'm saying? And I was able to work my way up. But it was just like for most. See, look at this. A degree ain't ain't ish especially in today's economy you're wrong you're wrong i dropped a video inside of the patreon on how it is that people can leverage certain degrees that they have in certain fields in order to be able to hustle up an additional half a million dollars a year and it blew people's minds it absolutely blew people's minds it was simple it was effective it's not something that anybody is talking about on the internet whatsoever right but i dropped a video inside of the patreon of how it is that you can leverage a degree in certain fields in order to continue to run the checkup. And it fucking blew people's minds. People like, oh my God, I can't believe that Anton just gave me that sauce. It's not because you don't know what you don't know. So stop saying a degree ain't shit when you're not adding the context behind it. An African studies degree ain't shit. A basket weaving degree ain't shit. A liberal arts degree in ballet ain't shit. But a degree can absolutely be leveraged in order to continue to run that checkup. 100% people that's not that's not real that's not reality they like all right i got a psychology degree now what i'm gonna do you're looking mm -hmm. around for jobs you, you're applying for jobs then let's say you land one they say sixty thousand. boy after they get done with you <laughs> after, after they get done with you hey, you like he said he telling me 
Okay. Like, dang, I really only bring it home seventeen fifty every two weeks. Mm -hmm. You rent fifteen hundred. You got two kids. I couldn't even imagine. Come on, off that, bro. That ain't cool. See, now I can't take you serious because you're not even speaking proper English. Bruh, I'm telling. Have a, a academics ain't shit. All right, I know who I'm dealing with. I'm not going to debate with you. You right. You right. You right. Don't worry about it. You right. I got you. I got you. You right. Shout out to you for giving us the game. Nothing nothing against the people that, that, that that's making that type of money, but. Yeah. Nah. I'm I'm way past that. Nah, way yeah. past. Yeah, that. yeah. That, it's like it's like I kind of feel like I feel like for me, like the lower level from an income perspective, a person should be making about a good worst case scenario about a good ten thousand a week. That's where people should be having like your thermometer should be at about ten thousand a week. If you can't, if you ain't doing ten thousand a week, and which is the equivalent of about fifty two five hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, ten thousand a week is over a half a million dollars a year. Just to break it down and help y'all to be able to extract what he's talking about. He's saying that your thermometer should be at least 500, a half a million dollars a year. That's where your thermometer should be. That's what he's telling y'all. Worst case, worst case scenario, at least a thousand a day, which is $7,000 a week. Mm -hmm. You should be floating right around that four or 500 grand a year type number. That's, that's when you're gonna be able to be comfortable with life, you're going to be able to buy some of the stuff that you always wanted, get your kids some stuff that they wanted, and you will be in a position where you will have more money than you got month because most people got more month than they got money. Mm -hmm. they, the, <laughs> it's, like, it's like you looking up, you're like, God damn, I got two checks. And yet your money gone, and then you still got 10 days left at the end of the month, and you can't wait till the first of the month here. Yeah. He's right about that, though. I had this conversation with y'all, and I said that I don't know how y'all looking at a high-value man is only $100,000 a year. I didn't add in the rest of the context. We're not going to talk about your LinkedIn profile or anything like that. But again, I was sent, I told y'all that I don't know how y'all sitting here thinking that y'all can survive after taxes on $67,000 a year. What a family of four. What you shoot for and what you where you actually land at is two different things. But I don't know how y'all just sitting here comfortable playing video, video games and thinking that everything is kosher off of that. He's right. He's right. He's absolutely right. He's 100% right. I agree 100% with him. Hell. That is the worst. To mm -hmm. tell your kids, wait till Friday or wait till, and they, you, you keep saying, you've been telling them that for the last three months? Nah, bro. And you got to think, bro, it's people that got to work a whole year for that money. That means that you got to make 60K work for it. What'd you say to me? Man, you know I can't wait to brag. He said, bro, you averaging what yearly? Let's do a guessing game. How much you think I'm averaging yearly, freak? Freak, freak poppy. What do you think I'm averaging? Apparently you knew here, my friend. If you had to guess what I average yearly, what would you guess? I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna play the rest of this video and then we gonna play guessing game. And then if, and if, you, if you a nice boy, I might pull up, pull up my back in and let you see some of my numbers. Christmas, Thanksgiving, and it's like, bro, like I'm just, I just want people to just listen to what I'm saying, bro. You, you got to bring that gift out of you that God put in you. Don't settle for just the job. Like you, here's the crazy part about job. It's like being in a bad relationship forever. You know you don't like the job. Mm -hmm. You know you don't like none of the people there. You hate your supervisors. They don't even like you. You don't like the pay. You know you underpaid. You overworked mm -hmm. and you stuck. And you steadily going there every single day. I don't understand why. And you know that you, that you got a gift inside of you. And if you just if you just willing to take some risk and you willing to bet on yourself and and figure and see what's on the other side of the hill, you may just be all right. But most people, it's like they crazy as hell. They rather live they known hills. Some of y'all can't participate because y'all know what I make because a lot of y'all see what it is that I'm breaking down inside of the Patreon because I show y'all my numbers. Some of y'all cannot participate because you know what I make. You've seen my W-2s. You've seen my 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 back end. You've seen what I what I take down. You've seen some of my direct deposits. So some of y'all some of y'all cannot some of y'all cannot participate because you've seen my numbers and you've seen my direct deposits. You've seen my bank accounts. You've seen all of that type of shit. 
Some of y'all should not do that. Y'all can't participate. He he's new, so we going we gonna let him breathe a little bit. Then then go out to the unknown heavens. Make it make sense, bro. No, that was a bar. <laughs> that was a bar. I don't I don't I don't understand it. Mm. Like why would you already know what you living in? You don't like it. That's hell. Hell mm. on earth. Mm -hmm. Why would why would you not take some risks and sacrifices mm. and go out to your unknown heavens? Mm. God got a plan for you, man. I agree with him. I think that he's 100% right.